Hey. All right, so we're going to talk about scatter plots and lines of fit. And a scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationship between two data sets. And they, you graph them on a coordinate plane, right? So that's an, just an example of a, of a scatter plot there, which this one is relating the two um, data sets are one of them is grams of sugar, the other one is calories. And they're related because um, each one of those dots represents one um, smoothie. Get my little laser pointer here. Each dot represents one smoothie. So there was, um, there was this smoothie right here. They measured that it had 70 grams of sugar and had 320 calories. And like this one right here, they said this one had 52 grams of sugar and it had 250 calories. So a scatter plot just shows you the relationship between two different data sets. Okay, so example one is um, just learning to interpret a scatter plot. So this scatter plot shows um, the X value is the amount in grams of sugar. So this is the same one we're looking at. The X value is the grams of sugar and the Y value is the number of calories. And so there's 10 different smoothies that they measured. So there's 10 dots. Each dot represents one smoothie. Okay, so um, the first question, how many calories are in the smoothie that contains 56 grams of sugar? Um, well, we need to find where on the graph is 56 grams of sugar. So 56 grams of sugar would be right here halfway between 54 and um, 58. So then we have to figure out, we have to follow kind of straight up and see what point um, or what smoothie, right, had 56 grams of sugar. So that point right there represents the smoothie that had 56 grams of sugar. Then we just have to look over to the side to see how many calories were in that smoothie. And that one had 270 calories. So for B, how many grams of sugar are in the smoothie that contains 320 calories? So 320 calories, it's up here. So then we just follow, Whoop. there's the point that represents the smoothie that had 320 calories. So then we just trace down and we see that that smoothie had 70 grams of sugar. And then this last question, what tends to happen to the number of calories as the number of grams of sugar increases? So as we get more grams of sugar in our smoothie, what seems to be happening to um, the number of calories in that smoothie? And you can kind of see that there's a trend, like the more sugar that's in the smoothie, the more calories that are in that smoothie, right? And that, and if you think about that, it makes sense, right? Because sugar has lots of calories. So if, if a smoothie has more sugar, it should also have more calories, right? Okay. So there's example one. Oh yeah, this is gonna be weird recording it if I send you the breakout rooms. Oh well, we're gonna see how it goes. Okay, so you need to um, take a screenshot of this. And then I'm gonna put you guys into breakout rooms so that you can answer these questions um, together. So let me go to the breakout room, Delio. And I'm just going to do them random because I don't have enough time to make them non-random.
Okay, so five minutes.
Okay. Welcome back. So I can't see the um, chat while I'm presenting. So um, does anybody um, come up with an answer for number one? How many calories are in the smoothie that has 51 grams of sugar? Two hundred and sixty. Two hundred and sixty. All right. So fifty-two would be halfway. So fifty-one would be there. You follow that up. It's like this point right here, right? So that goes over to two hundred and sixty, right? So that's two hundred and sixty calories. How about um, somebody different? Have um, number two. How many grams of sugar are in the smoothie? That has 250 calories. 52. Yeah, so you follow the 250 calories is here, and that's right in halfway in the middle, so that's 52. 52 grams. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is identifying correlations between data sets. So a correlation is basically just a relationship. Um, and you can use a, a scatter plot to describe the correlation. So here's a positive correlation. A positive correlation happens when <clears throat> as the x value increases, the y value also increases. So here we have low x values and we have low y values. But as our X values get bigger, our Y values are also getting bigger, right? Um, we can, you can imagine like a, a line that kind of goes through um, our points there and that line would have a positive slope. So that's one way to remember that a positive correlation you would have, if, if, if you could imagine a line that went through most of your points, that line would have a positive slope. A negative correlation happens when, as your X values get bigger, your Y values get smaller. So here we have small X values. And if you look at those points, they have big Y values. And then as our X values get bigger, our Y values are getting lower. So here are some high X values and they have pretty low Y values. So that's a negative correlation. And you can visualize a, a line going through those points and it would have a negative slope because it's going downhill as it goes from left to right. Then sometimes you can't, you can't really figure out one line to go through all your points, right? With the positive correlation one over here, you can clearly see that those kind of follow a linear pattern. And these ones, you can see also that it follows a pretty linear pattern. But here you're like, um, well, does it go like this or does it go like this? If you can't draw a line through it, then there's, there's no correlation. If they don't seem to be following any certain pattern, then that would be no correlation. Because if you look at, uh, if you look at this last graph, you can't say like, oh, when the X values are low, so here's the low X value, but that has like a medium kind of Y value and some high Y values. But here are some high X values, but you got low Y values and high Y values there. So there's not really a pattern. So we would say no correlation. So here's an example. So whether the data show a positive, a negative, or a no correlation, and then you can also, you can look at the graph and you can also think about the, the, um, the actual variables that are being related to each other, right? So if you look at this graph, it kind of looks like, I don't know, maybe it's sort of going up to the right-ish, right? If I drew a line like right here, you might be able to argue that those points kind of follow that line, right? But what if, but I could also kind of draw a line that goes like, like here, and you could also say that like that line kind of follows the points too, 
because they're sort of going uphill a little bit here, but they're sort of going downhill if you look at it this way. So this is one where there's not one specific um, trend. It's not just they're all going sloping uphill. They're not just all sloping downhill. So that one is, um, we're going to say no correlation here. And then let's think about this. Should there be a like a direct correlation between a person's age and the number of vehicles they own? Now, there might be a little bit, right? You're not going to see, notice how they don't have like zero to 20. They don't really count you guys. And then young people probably, like super young people probably aren't going to have a ton of cars. Um, but the older you get, the more chance you have of owning more cars, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to own more cars. So you don't just own more cars just because you get older, right? Your age, you know, just because you get older, that doesn't mean you definitely get more cars. Does that make sense? So that's why these two don't actually have a correlation. What about part B? We got temperature and coat sales. So if you look at the picture, it kind of looks like they're pretty lined up, right? So I'm tempted to say that's a negative correlation. And I just want to check and make sure it would make sense that that temperature and coat sales would have a negative correlation. So as the temperature gets higher, so it's getting hotter outside, does it make sense that you would sell fewer coats? Yeah, the hotter it is outside, if it's 70 degrees outside, you're probably not going to sell quite as many coats. If it's 40 degrees outside, you're probably going to be selling more coats. So that makes sense to say, to conclude that this has a negative correlation. As the temperature increases, coat sales decrease. Okay. So I'm gonna go the um, I'm gonna go over an example here with you, and then you guys are gonna do one of these together. So we're gonna make a scatter plot of this data, and then we're gonna tell whether it shows a positive, a negative, or a no correlation. So here they give us some data. They tell us that our our x value is temperature. Okay, so that's going to be on the x-axis. So I need to figure out what numbers to put on the x-axis of my graph down here. So let's see. What's my highest temperature? My highest temperature is 92, it looks like. And what's my lowest temperature? Looks like my lowest temperature is 68. So how far is it between those two? That's about, let's see, 70 to 90 is 20. So that's 24 in between them. So how many spaces do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so I would need to make each one of these like, see, if I started at 60 and then I made each line worth, uh, let's see, if I do it by two, it won't be, I won't have enough room. I'll only get over to like 80. So I need to do like more than two, so maybe four on each one. 64, 68, 72, 76, um, 80, 84, 88, uh, 92. That's really as far as I need to go because my highest one is 92, right? And then what about my Y values, the attendees in thousands? So the lowest one is 1.7. So I might as well just start it at zero and then go up to, I need to go up to at least 5.5. Okay, so I have 10 of these. So if I actually, I'm going to start at, at one. So this will be... Um, 1.0 at the bottom and then can I do if I do 1.5 and then 2.0 2.5 3.0 3.5 4.0 4.0 
four point five, five point zero, five point five. There, and I've got my x and my y axes set up so that I can make a um, scatter plot here. Okay, so now I'm just going to do them as ordered pairs, x comma y. So I'm looking for for the first one. I'm doing eighty two comma four point five. So 82 would be here, and then 4.5 would be here. So make a dot there. Um, 78, 4.0. So 78 would be here, and 4.0 would be there. 68 and 1.7. 68 is here, 1.7 would be about there. Then we got 87 and 5.5. .5. So 87 would be just shy of 88 and 5.5. .5. So right about here. 75, 3.8. Would be so 75 would be about here, 3.8 would be about here, 71 and 2.9, 71 would be about there, and then 2.9 would be just under three. Ninety-two and four point seven. So here's ninety-two. 4.7 would be about here. And then 84, 5.3. So 84 is here. 5.3 would be about there. So there's our scatter plot. What kind of a correlation does it show? pretty clear that it's going uphill right no there's a you could imagine like a line kind of going through most of those points right there so this has a, a positive so could we like think of it as like stocks like stocks go up and down yeah right and you and you want to analyze trends right and the better your trend looks the more reliable that is, right? And the, the less you can see a trend, the less you want to kind of bet on that stock, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to also... Um, yeah, we'll wait for the... So here's what we're going to do. You guys are now going to um try this together and i'm going to give you guys 15 minutes in the breakout room this time so make sure you get a screenshot of this and maybe if you have graph paper or dot kind of paper um to make your or, or you, if you don't have any of that you can just kind of do your best to make it look as straight as possible when you do your um your scatter plot and then identify whether it has a positive or negative correlation so Hopefully you've got your screenshot and I'll get ready to set up the breakout rooms. Ooh, I can put a timer on it. Minutes. All right, here we go.
Welcome back to the main call. I hope you enjoyed your breakout time. <clears throat> A couple of people fell asleep in uh, in the breakout rooms, I guess. Okay, so let's go back to this. What did we what did we come up with? Did we come up with a positive, a negative, or a no correlation? Positive, I think. All right, so let's see. Um, let me. I'll just kind of like with the negative. You think, came up with the negative. I, I think it's either positive or negative because I can't tell. If it starts on the left side or the right side. Okay. Well, let's I take say a it's negative because the value of the card decreases over time. Yeah, but like if it starts on the left side, it that would be that it starts with seven thousand, but it increases to twenty four thousand. But right. but, but what, side, what you really like what I think what he was just saying is Remember when it came down to it was like as X increases, does Y do the same or does it do the opposite? So as X increases, that means as the car gets older and older and older and older. So that's X increase. What mm -hmm. happens to the Y value? Does the Y value as the car gets older, the value gets actually lower, right? Yeah. As the age X goes up, the value Y actually goes down. So that would be a negative. Right. Okay. I just didn't understand. I didn't understand. I knew it was one of those, but I just didn't understand. So, um, so if you're ever looking at um, a scatter plot and you can't remember, like, oh, is this going up? Is this positive? Is this negative? Try to remember that it's it's positive if x and y are going in the same direction, right? If if x is going up, but y is going down every time, then that's negative correlation. Okay, I think um, we're gonna stop here for today. Let me go and stop the recording.